Hello and welcome to Boring Dead Gaming, where today I'm going to be playing Broken Roads, a demo of at least. This is a demo available on Steam at the moment as I'm filming this. I don't know if it's one that's going to stay permanently available. Um, but what this is, this is kind of a cross between uh, something like the classic Fallout games, Fallout 1, Fallout 2, and something a bit more like Disco Elysium, I think, is the impression I've got. Uh, but it's all based in the Australian outback, kind of like a post-apocalyptic Australian kind of setting, which is uh, not one that's appeared very often in video games, and one that I'm quite excited to explore. So without anything else said, let's, uh, let's start. My nan called it the end of time. Dad called it a waste of good beer. Me, I called it another day in bloody paradise. It's been a hundred years, or less, since society had its last hurrah. We've rebuilt, sometimes better, sometimes worse, with nothing but hard jacker and the squirt off our backs. There's been bloodshed too, of course. People who will always be willing to kill for what they didn't earn. But that's not most of us. We're the farmers, the brewers, the protectors and the builders, the people who keep this great land connected one town at a time. So you survive. You make do. You live with tough choices and you don't look back because the next town is 200 kilometers away and mate, you passed the last refuge three days ago. There's no good or evil. No right or wrong. Only the path you choose to travel down these broken roads. There we go. So, a little bit about the game there. Uh, the loading seems to be happening, I was going to say quite slowly, but it's all done. So here we go, just saying welcome to the demo, welcome feedback, etc, etc. Let's continue. Uh, so we have a choice of origin, appearance, morality and statistics. I just went back and lowered, I thought the game volume was a bit high, so I just went and lowered it. Hopefully that is okay. So in terms of origin, uh, there is going to be four available in the game it looks like. We've got hired gun, surveyor, barter crew... Jackaroo. Now these last three aren't available in the demo, so we're going to play Hired Gun. Um, you grew up with a gun in your hand. If you wanted to eat, you shot what your parents told you to shoot. Starvation is a powerful motivator. It was that simple. They hired you out when you were in your teens, telling clients that a hungry kid shoots better. After a few years, you worked up the courage to run away and you crossed the outback to make a new life for yourself. Turns out you've got one main skill, hurting people. Uh, you've hired yourself out for a few years now. Protection for barter crews and scrap prospectors. An extra gun for a gang raid. You've even earned a bit of a reputation. That's why you weren't surprised when the Brookton crew offered you a permanent gig with their barter crew. It's a mad world out there, and instead of trying to make sense of it, you've carved your place in it. You'll be damned if anyone thinks you'll just quit. So, from this, looks like a bit of a... Um, bit of a mer mercenary, probably? Uh, tribute bonuses to awareness and strength, so sort of quite physical stuff for range damage and melee damage. Uh, we've got a shooting mastery and help yourself to a free swipe at enemies doing a runner. So like an uh, uh, attack of opportunity, they call it in D&D. A unique perk, Rally and Cry. All allies gain plus four initiative until this character's next turn. While rallied, each character's first attack during their turn gets a bonus to accuracy, equal to triple the value of the user's charisma score. Okay. Fine. Uh, oh, we'll continue. Appearance. Uh, so we've got sort of four archetypes then to play as. Uh, I'm always tend to be like a Caucasian guy, don't I? So I'm going to be a, a ginger woman now. I'll be boring. It'll be a boring Jill. Uh, okay. So this uh, I saw another video on this and this, how this works is as I understand it, it's a little bit similar to the like the D&D &D alignment system um, so various actions within the game will kind of push your alignment in different directions and based on kind of where you fall where your alignment falls within this wheel uh, you'll get various perks and stuff 
Uh, I think we can choose one to begin with. Uh, but the way it does it is quite interesting because it's going to... If you ever played Ultima 4... Uh, I mean, I didn't play other Ultima games, early Ultima games. But certainly Ultima 4, it would, you'd be quizzed at the beginning of the game to try and work out your starting class. And it's, it's what it's going to do uh, here. Um, so we close that. Yeah, so we're going to get a series of questions and it's going to sort of pick a... Um, an alignment for us based on, on our answers. So let's have a look. You just picked up a job to escort a captured thief. You get to talking and he tells you the sad tale of how he came to be captured. Sounds like he was not really the perp and he actually makes a pretty good case for his innocence. He begs you to free him. So we've got four choices. We could let him go free. I'll, you'll argue his case and at least prevent an innocent man from enduring, enduring mob justice. Nihilist. You've been paid to do a job and you plan to see it through. So just like ignore his innocence get the job done. Utilitarian. Promise him you'll plead his case. It doesn't serve anyone's interest to execute an innocent man. It doesn't serve yours if he is in fact guilty. Uh, Alright. Machiavellian. Tell him to make you an offer. You won't get the other half of your pay if you get into Brookton without him. Uh, and if you help him escape, your reputation as a hired gun can take it. Well, I'm tending towards the utilitarian. Let's just say we'll take him in and uh, we'll plead his case. And if he's innocent, he'll be found innocent. If not, not. So let's do that. After a series of raids on caravans passing near your home, you put together a scouting party. You've caught a bandit leader and one of his raiders. The leader plans for release, pledging to comply with your terms. Do you free him? Okay. Execute both on the spot. Take him town to stand trial. Uh, escort them far away, warning if you catch them there again, they're dead. Or... <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that is a bit nasty, isn't it? Um, do we believe him? Uh, well, I'm going to go utilitarian again, take him to trial. A nearby townstead has a new chief and he's starting to flex his muscles. He sends an envoy with a threat. Pay tribute or suffer his wrath. He clearly has the military strength to back it up. Do you pay? Okay. Let him come, negotiate with the envoy, and escort him back. Concealed, your top fighters follow in town. Publicly execute the envoy, displaying his head on a spike. Warn the others to surrender their chief or face the same fate. Wow. Send scouts to see if he can enforce his demands. If he can, pay up. If he can't, send him a mocking reply. I mean... I kind of like this one. I'm going to do it. <laughs> a child in the village has started showing symptoms of the plague. The town chose to quarantine him and his family, but you caught him sneaking out of the house to play with the other kids. What now? Then go with a warning. Uh, evict the entire family. Send him back to his house under careful guard. Return him to his house and explain to the family what will happen if they're all infected. Make them see reason. Um, plague, though, innit? Plague. Yeah, I'm going to go Machiavelli. I'm going to go. I'm leaning towards Machiavellian here, aren't I? You've been captured by people who've clearly gone mad, finding yourself in a pen along with a Jew farmer you've met before, a mercenary stripped of his weapons, and a terrified young family. The captors assemble a massive pyre, indicating their intent for a twisted sacrifice. Noting a, noticing a guard's distraction, you're certain you can escape on your own, but every person you bring with you increases the chances you'll get caught. Get out as many as possible, slip away on our own. Convince the Merc to come with you. The Jew farmer can likely find his own way out, but the family will be nothing but a liability. Okay, we're going to go humanist on this one. Uh, get the family out first. The other captives should be able to handle themselves. You've discovered a cache of pre-apocalypse supplies in an abandoned farmhouse. You can't carry it all back on your own, so you enlist a few friends from town to help. When you return to the cache, you find a group of emaciated scavengers in the process of looting the place themselves. Do you let them take the supplies? Um, oh god. No way. Threaten them. If they don't handle the supplies, kill them. Take the supply. Let them take the supplies, but secretly follow them back to the home and then kill them. Uh, let them go. They're starving. And need them more than you do. I'm going to go to the again. Oh god. I've, so I've slapped. 
to slap bang and utilitarian by the look of it. Tell them you found the place first and offer to split the takings. Better to get less than you wanted than to spill blood or get nothing at all. Yeah, seems fair to me. Uh, so there we are. Let's go. Attributes and skill trees. There are six attributes. Strength, agility, resolve, awareness, intelligence and charisma. From these we get fortitude, temperance and wisdom as sort of secondary stats. Okay. Each origin story comes with unique bonuses. For hide gun, those are plus one strength and awareness. Uh, plus ten to shooting, mastery and five to opportunist. We saw this already. Uh, okay. The punt skill. Alright, what's this? One of the unique skills in Broken Roads is the ability to have a punt, essentially taking a risk on something uncertain. Your player character has a pool of punt points, PP. They can draw on if they need to attempt a skill check that they fall just short of or if they want to increase the accuracy of a particular attack in combat. During dialogue, active skill checks which fall within the range of your character skills and punt points will be displayed with a unique icon alongside the text. This will allow you to spend punt points for a chance to succeed at a task you would otherwise be unable to perform. So it's not a guaranteed success. Punt is derived from charisma, plus any additional points added to the punt skill. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Interesting. So boring Jill. Um, let's see. We've got ten attributes to spend. Uh, I'd, I'd like a little more charisma, I think. Um... Persuasion checks. Yeah, I think it's going to be quite a dialogue-heavy game. I'm going to go 10 in Charisma. Intelligence. Affects action points. Initiative, intimidation checks. Mm, maybe we'll give ourselves a little top-up in that. Resolve, endurance and toughness. We'll have one in that. Awareness. Uh, affects range damage, accuracy, blah, blah, blah. I think it'll be a ranged class. Let's give ourselves a little boost in that. Agility, reflexes and speed. I probably want a little boost in that. Can we, actually we can actually reduce it past its current level. That's good to know. Melee damage, health points. So do we actually have like a dump stat here? I don't know that we do, because it all sounds pretty useful, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm going to put the extra one into awareness there uh, for the ranged stuff. So everything's kind of even anyway. Uh, skills. We've got 30 points in skills. So Barbican. Uh, basically be a tank, I think. Melee mastery, opportunist. Um, stealth's not available. Throwing. Mm, Deadeye. Take the time to line up your shot. Make an attack with a bonus to accuracy. That sounds pretty good. So if we do... Okay, so we get... At 25, we'll get a new perk, I think. We'd have to spend a lot on that. Drunken Master. Handle your liquid courage and use it in a scrap. <laughs> I don't know about that. Shooting Mastery. Make every shot count. Bonus to damage and stuff. Yeah, we actually only need one to get a bonus thing here. Bonus passive. We can equip ranged weapons and perform ranged attacks. Is that, is that, was that what the difference was? Ranged attacks gain bonus damage. Oh, there we go. Vigilance. That's like an Overwatch thing, I think. Could be good. Biology, uh, like being a doctor, I think. Leadership. Attempt to mark an enemy, increasing the damage they take for the rest of combat. Uh, I'll we'll take a couple in that. Punt. Uh, yeah, we probably that sounds quite useful. We probably want that to go quite high. Let's actually take it up to 25, so it increases the amount of money found. All right. Tinker, use swanky devices, pick locks. Oh yeah, we want to go a little on this. That's, I'm going to take that up to 25. Uh, so what did that... I don't know what that extra perk did. Probably just... Maybe affects the type of... Like the quality of li uh, pox, uh, locks we can pick. Um, we've got five. Again, we can't really we can't drop any of these down. Alright, so we'll take Drunken Master up to 20. And we'll stick the other one in. Mm -mm. Alright, biology. Alright. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I know there's a lot of conversation in this game and not a lot of combat, so we'll see how this goes. It's possible that I would 
generally play a different kind of class for a game that isn't particularly combat heavy, but we will find out. You made it. Good. My name's Jake. Jake Anderson. And this here's Bally Bally Hall. The sandy man, the sandy haired man's face is sunbeaten and craggy, a testament to a life lived in the bush. Okay, so only the first line was voiced. Truth to tell, wasn't sure you'd make it. Between the wildlife and the attacks we've seen, thought you might have met with some misadventure. He wipes his nose with his thumb and sniffs. So the job's simple, no. and the pay's good. You'll ride along to Kokobi with a couple of my scouts as security for Cole, the engineer fixing our radio. In Kokobi, you'll be meeting Mick, the mayor of Brookton, and escorting them both back home. I'm just going to change the level of audio, because the music is kind of loud seems to me. I'm going to bump the voices up. Balance felt a little bit off. It's an easy job, not expecting much trouble, but better safe than sorry, yeah? He doesn't wait for an answer. Let me introduce you round. Ella's over here, she's my second. He pauses. My cousin too. Her and her sister Mad, who's been keeping watch from the crow's nest. Don't get on their bad sides. New blood, eh, Jake? The ranger woman's face is careworn and sunbeaten. She looks you up and down and raises an eyebrow. Hard gun for the trip to Cokeby. Figured it couldn't hurt, the situation being what it is, eh? Gonna be with you, so maybe you can give the tour. Uh, Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. She looks at you almost as if she pities you. I'm sure your sparkling personality will shine through and you'll win a place in her heart in no time, Ella. That's me, noted heartbreaker and charmer. She's so deadpan, she seemed, almost seems serious. You fancy seeing the place? Meet the colourful locals? Uh, yeah, let's get on with it. So you've already met the boss. That leaves Jonesy, Dreamer and Mad. Might as well say hi to Cole too, soon as you'll be escorting him. Let's go. Uh, move your character around the map. Left click on an area. Right, so, uh, Waz for the camera. That's fine. Five icons. Party management. Moral compass. Journal. Map and menu. Yep. Oh, no. Oh. That all seems fine. I've been getting quite close to the characters, actually. Let's stay a little bit zoomed out so we can see more of the world. Okay. So what does it say in our journal? You've got to meet everyone, basically. That's fine. Ooh. Yeah, I think we understand the principle of a journal. Let's talk to this guy. Ella call, calls out as you near a young man, elbow deep in a pile of electronics. Oi, Carl! Who's this, then? The gangly young man hurriedly wipes his hands on his coverall when he sees you. His carrot orange hair flops over his eyes as he gives you a broad grin. Cole, meet your new protector. We need extra muscle for our trip to Brookton, given Jake and Jones here headed down Alder Sideway to see why they're so quiet. Hide this one on to keep an eye now. Oh, that's bloody fantastic. I'm just about done with the repeater array here. It should be powering up with the solar panels in no time. Get you scouts back up and on the network in a jiffy. It'll all get sorted once I can hit the market in Cokeby and... She holds up a hand. Steady there, Christmas. I was just making an introduction. One thing at a time. You raise older sides yet? Ah, oh, crikey. No, not yet. That's why I mentioned Cokeby. See, your modulator's shot and I don't have a spare, so it's a good thing we're headed up there. Once I get that modulator, everything else is golden and you'll be right as rain. Uh... We're a decent tinkerer, aren't we? So are you sure it's the modulator? Is it an input problem? His eyes light up. You know electronics? Oh, am I glad to hear that. Listen, what's happening here is... He launches into a string of technical jargon, and while you're able to follow along, he's uh, pretty damn smart. And you're forced to admit that the problem is, in fact, the modulator. Oh, we got a turpentine. Eventually he winds down. Crikey, that was a good yarn. He hands you a small, clear plastic bottle. I'll bet you'll be able to put this to good use, too. Uh, the scouts don't have a working radio. Nah, till we get this modulator sorted, might as well learn how to use passenger pigeons or reflecting mirrors or something. You know, mirrors are great in the daytime, well, the sunny daytime, but kind of worthless at night and cloudy days. So yeah, we need to get a Cokeby for a new part. When do you want to head out? Will? He steps back and looks at his tools, the radio and the solar panels. I reckon whenever you're ready to go, I can clean up real fast. In the meantime, I'll keep working on projects around here. Got nothing really pressing back in Brookton, I don't think. We'll have plenty of time to chat on the way to Kokobi. Alright. 
if I double, so they, that's kind of walking speed shift. Okay, they see. Yeah, they seem to run when it's far away, and then kind of slow down when it gets uh, when they kind of approach that spot. Go in here. As far as I can tell, there isn't a button that kind of lets you know the hot spots. So we'll just uh, we'll just potter about, really. Camels. There's only a small amount of grimy water left in the tub. Those camels are going to need something to drink, and soon. Oh, it feels like the music is still a bit loud. Um. There we go. All right, fill the tub with fresh water. You quickly fill the tub. Providing clean drinking water for those noble beasts. You're already a hero. A real hero. Good on ya. We fed the thirsty, well, watered the thirsty camels. Who's this? I think having a button to highlight hotspots would be very good because I know there's a lot of stuff going on. Ned and his brothers have got a lot to answer for. Okay. He's this is Ned, Name's I assume, Jonesy, is mate. Oh. Who are you? The tanned hooded man is busy cleaning a gun as you approach. He looks you up and down quickly, professionally, and back to his weapon. Jake Harder to give us a hand on the way to Cokeby. She's pretty new to the life. Got tips for her? New gun for the good guys, eh? Glad to hear it. You ever use your weapon on a person before? Um, yeah, well, we're kind of a mercenary, aren't we? So, like, yeah. He raises an eyebrow. Well, then why is that I think I can teach anything to a hardened killer like you? But hell, maybe this will be useful. So my advice is this. Time comes to throw down, don't blink. None of the Darrows out in the bushwood, it's them or you. I made the mistake of trying to be kind once. He pulls down the top of his shirt to show a nasty scar running across his chest. Here's how she repaid me. He shakes his head sadly. Well, they've sunk that low. The only help for him is hot lead. Uh, well, that, that's, that's a good cure for anyone. He flashes a quick, fierce grin. You'll do fine out here, new kid. I hate to ruin this heady discussion, but I'm supposed to keep squiring our friend to around. You and Jake headed back to Brookton after all decide, yeah? Yeah, gonna swing by and see me old man. Gotta update him on the kill count. Uh, look, so if, if you... Oh, okay, so some decisions are maybe weighed more than others? Because look at that moving to humanist, but if you took the nihilist one, that, that's quite a big jump. Probably because nihilist is opposite to the one we're doing. Um, Alright, let's try and go Machiavellian. Building a fearsome reputation, huh? Nice. Yep, good for me and for Brookton both. If Darrow's here that some place is under my protection, I want them to think twice about hitting it. Don't let him fool you. Under that bloodthirsty exterior lurks. Well, the heart of a killer. But under that, not a bad guy. Not if he's on your side. Well, unless you're a farmer. Then you should lock up your wife and daughters. Livestock too. Ah, you know me so well, Ellie. Except the livestock thing. No one can prove that. <laughs> He turns to you and points his thumb over his shoulder at her. Watch out for her, she's secretly not always mean. Pfft, bullshit. I made her mean. Anyway, like I said, we've got to keep moving. You have anything more to talk to Jainzy about? Uh, let's try a little target practice. For sure, let's get on it and you can show us what you've got. Get stuck into it. Okay, so... Here we go. Optimal range. Different weapons are more effective depending on the distance from the target. Pistols and shotguns work well up close. Rifles from a medium distance and sniper rifles from further away. Experiment with different weapons of varying distance to work out the optimal range. Your shooting mastery and deadeye skills will also affect damage and accuracy as you improve them. So what am I using? I'm using a... Oh, okay. Oh, I 
it looks like it's just a rifle, doesn't it? So anyway, 72%, 29%, 63%. So this is fairly good. Uh, movement points. We've got, so I think we've got four movement points and like four action points. Okay, so that would be three action points. Uh, if I was to move, say here into cover, that's flank now. That's 81% on this one now. All right, let's take it. Maimed. So that's probably my... We can reload for one AP, actually, so uh, we may as well, right? I've actually got two movement points, but I'll stay here. It's in turn. Okay, being dummies, they aren't doing a lot for us. Or to us. Um... Okay, so we have some skills here as well. Dead Eye. 5 AP. How do I get more AP then? Maybe it's. Maybe it. Um, hmm. If we just end our turn, do I get more than the next turn? No. Now that's interesting. <laughs> Seventy-two. We'll try. It. Maybe we'll take the seventy-two. Okay. So that's saying that's the most I can move. That's... No, no, no. We don't want to retreat. Oh, I see. That's outside a, a designated combat arena. But I think we'll get a couple of flanks here if I do this. Or that one. Alright, let's kill this one. I think we missed. Alright, let's try again. There we go. What do we got on this one now? 72? Alright, we'll try it. There it goes. again. Need to reload. Uh, infinite ammunition, but you do need to spend AP. That's good to know. Right, reload. Hopefully our last turn needed here. There we go. Not bad, mate. Good to have you on board. Hey, Ella, you might not be the resident sharpshooter much longer. She says nothing, but gives Jonesy the most tired of your shit stare you've ever seen. All right. Let's move up here then. Anything in here? Do we? Oh, it's hard to hard to say. It doesn't look like it. Uh, question mark. Somebody up there. Let's talk to this cha uh, chap, girl. Ella raises a hand to the young woman as you approach her. Dreamer, give the fresh meat a wave, will you? Fresh meat? For dinner? You know I gave up human flesh, Ella. I'm Misty. They call me Dreamer. Pleased to meet you. She feigns shock. Oh my, I haven't seen manners like that since I left Meriden. You're a beacon of civilization. She beams. Mate, it's a pleasure to meet you. Working with these Darrows all day can be tough. Ella growls. Darrows, you chose to join the Scouts. You're as dirty as the rest of us now, city slicker. It's clear she's got a soft spot for Dreamer. Anyway. My job here, such as it is, consists of two main gigs. What I do best is convince people to save their bullets. I defuse fights, make sure people get along, keep their blood inside their skins. The other job, cleaning up this mess. Anything I can help with? Well, that's really kind of you to ask. As a matter of fact, I could use a hand with a couple of things. Last fellow was a bit of a legend in his own lunchbox. 
now he's dead. Better to know up front if someone's aim is a bit shit. Corpses aren't so great at self-improvement. She turns around to survey the encampment. Let's see, I heard you practicing at the firing range, so that's sorted. And you filled the tub, so that's another check on the list. Just need the scrub cleared out of the paddock then. Uh Alright, should right. get moving. It should be easy work. Okay, that just makes sound when I click on it. Uh outhouse. That's is, that, is this where we started? No, I don't think so. The coals are still glowing faintly over a mound wrapped in aluminum foil. Aluminium foil. Uh, damp, damper for supper. I don't know what damper is. Uh, yeah, being able to highlight hotspots would be lovely. I think that should be added. Oh, wait. Who's this? Nice of the scouts to have a place where you can go to let one rip. Just make sure you're unaccompanied. Oh, <laughs> No, you don't let one rip. That's R.I.P., my friend. Okay. Uh, people always want to leave their mark, regardless of how hard it is to read. Where are you going, Ella? Where are you going? Something about a paddock. Oh, this stuff probably, isn't it? This grub looks like it's invading the cabal's enclosure, and they're having trouble resting without getting pricked. It wouldn't take you long to clear it out. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, huh. Okay, remember it is a demo. Uh, but I think we're stuck. <laughs> Okay, I might see if I can save... Let's, actually, I don't need to quit the game. Let's see if we can save... Oh. Let's see if we can load. That'd be a shame. Alright, tell you what, I'm going to have to load, I think. Um, but I'll quickly just run through all the stuff I've just done here and, and get back to this point. Okay, well, we're back here again. Let's see if it works this time. This I had to uh, completely come out of the like game and re come, the come back into it again. And they're having trouble resting without getting pricked. It wouldn't take you long to clear it out. Oh. Right, we're going to give it one more try. Okay, we're here. That's interesting. Wait, was that an auto save? Huh, weird. It's not though, it's not though. Okay. <laughs> this grub looks like it's invading the camel's enclosure and they're having I had this trouble before, that's why I had to come out of it. Uh, it when I load a save, it, it the speech windows don't come up. This grub looks like it's invading oh. the camel's enclosure. But, I, by pressing 1, because I know it was supposed to be there, it, it does get rid of it. Okay, finally, we got rid of this. Alright, let's go back to Jill. Not Jill, Dreamer. We're Jill. Fresh meat? So, yeah, for some reason... For dinner? I thought I'd saved after I'd you spoken to her, but for some reason it hasn't done it. Anyway. Help... Done everything sorted. That's bloody fantastic! Great work, mate. I definitely owe you one. Remind me at the pub later on, would you? Here you go. Oh, you've saved me a ton of trouble. Anything else today? So we asked her if there's anything in the bush we should know about. She shrugs. Get the old bush ranger here and there. Disputes between farmers. Some strange buggers wandering in from the wild. The drought's really making people desperate. Nothing we can't handle, though. You'll be fine. Later. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, let's save this. Uh, so there we are. Okay, now, there's a guy up here. Can we get to talk to him? Maybe we can shout up to him. She gestures to the roof of the hall. Look up there in the crow's nest. That's my sister, mad. She'll be staying behind when the rest of us range out on our jobs later. 
Matt, new hired gun. Going to be coming with Mishti and me to Kokobi. The woman in the watchtower wears drab brown clothes, loose and comfortable. Her face is hard, her build muscular. She looks like she wrestles ruse for fun. She scowls down from the makeshift turret. You babysit Nella or she's sitting you? I'll keep an eye on her for you. Hope you do a better job than the last one, poor fucker. Ella snorts. Like I'm the one who needs a sitter, Mad. Wasn't that long ago I was changing your nappies. She turns to you. You ready to move on? Meet the others? Fuck you, Ella, she says without rancor. Hey, before you go, new kid, I need you to make sure the perimeter's secure before you all head out. Don't want any unpleasant surprises. Uh, what do you need? Not going to run your mouth then. We'll get along fine. She chews her lip for a moment, studying the fence and points. I want you to work, walk a circle round the outside of the fence, check it for holes. But Dingo can fit through, call it out and we'll patch it up. No need for you to get your precious hands dirty, just need your eyes. Uh, I don't mind repairing it. She sneaks a bit. You don't have to be so eager, mate. We're no strangers to hard work. All I need are your eyes. Besides, don't you have a coca be run? Get this done and you can head out. All right. She settles back in her chair, scanning That's eyes, scanning the horizon. Right Come on, let's go. All right, let's go do this quest then. So outside of the fence. Looking for holes. Yeah, there's one, isn't it? I hear something. Ella stops to inspect a small hole in the fence. Bloody thing's falling apart. Mad will need to patch this one properly. She shouts over the fence. Oh, Mishti, you hear me? Tell Mad she's got a proper patch-up job to do out here, would you? Ah, oh, she's gonna love that. Okay, let's move. Need to do a thorough check of the whole fence before we're done. Okay. Looks like she's gonna let us know automatically, so that's fine. Hard to find trees this tall and straight anymore. Must have been brought in from the east some time ago. Oh, referring to the, uh, yeah, those. What else have we got? Maybe here? You notice a piece of corrugated iron board coming loose. Hey Ella, look. What? It's like a loose spot here? She takes a closer look at where you're pointing. Nice find, reckon a new bolt or two is all she needs. This thing's been patched up since, uh, well, geez, before. Since before, I reckon. Might be there's not even a single piece of the original wall still here. Wall remains, though. Let's keep moving. Okay, maybe one more. Hold up. She stops and motions to a section of nearby fence. A small pile of dirt is next to a shallow hole. Ooh, looks like someone's been trying to dig their way in. Raiders, maybe? Raiders? She can't keep from laughing. Mate, nobody comes here looking for shit. These are the fucking dingoes trying to make their way in. Bastards have been coming non-stop since Mishy let her chook's room about. She lets out another short laugh. We'll be sure to let you know if any raiders come by, though. Well, I reckon that's enough to keep Mad off her ass while we're away. Nice work. Oi, Mad. Found three lovely jobs for you. Should keep you from falling asleep while we're gone. Mad snarls something unintelligible and turns away again. Well, your eyes work and you can follow instructions. So far, so good. Right, let's head back and check in with the others. Cole's got to be done by now. Yep. Let's go do that. Uh, the map. Yeah, so we've got a little map of the area. That's that's all right. Um, oh yeah, we can scroll it. Little car over there. We didn't get there, but it's been years since this area had any significant rainfall. Some of the gums have clearly given up the ghost. All right. Uh, Checking with Cole, maybe. We'll right. have plenty of time to chat on the way to Kokobi. Let's chat with this guy then. Heard you're having your chin wags with everyone. How are you finding Ella? She's rough around the edges, but then we all are. It's why I like to have her score higher people around. Anyway, what do you think of the place? Good sight lines. You can see enemies coming a long way off. He smiles, clearly proud of the place. Yeah, we've done some work clearing the trees around here. Had a nasty scare years back. 
Some refos from up north of Perth came round looking for an easy target and we decided we looked the part. Sorry, and decided we looked the part. They hid out in the old tree line and if mad, only knee high to a grasshopper at the time, hadn't raised the alarm, they might have had us. As it was, took everything we had to hold them off. Ever since, we've cut the trees back. Anyway, if you're done with that, time to get coal up to Kokobi. Like I said before, should be safe and easy. Once you get there, meet up with Mick. He can be a real charmer. Or he can be a right bastard. He's a hard man, so it's best not to bullshit him. He's Jonesy's adopted dad, if that gives you any idea what he's like. You'll be going with him back to Brookton. Jonesy and me will meet you there once we've finished up on older side. Anything else you need from Bally Bally before we go? Uh, yeah, I think we're just about ready. Yep, we've wrapped up what missed you in Madhouse. Let's get moving. Okay, best of luck with everything. We'll meet you in Brookton once we're done. Jonesy, grab your gear. We're rolling out. Same, we're on the way then. She shouts to the other two. Cole, Dreamer, let's get on the road. You know the drill, Ella. Stay safe and don't be stupid. Now nah, was as Jake. None of the stupid leaked into my side of the family tree. We're all set. <laughs> I would be deeply offended if I were smart enough to understand that, I'm sure. <laughs> but look, keep your skin in one piece, yeah? This goes double for you, Mishti. If you're outside the gate, you don't let your guard down. He, tur he turns to face you. You too, new kid. If all else fails, listen to Ella. She'll steer you right. Got it, Chief. See you later. Yeah, I want to go a quick look at the... Oh, no, we can't. Okay, travel. <laughs> I was going to have a quick look at the journal and stuff and see how that's set up, but we'll do that in a bit. You're not even an hour away from Bally Bally Hall when you spot a makeshift cart on the road. A man lies motionless on the ground. A sobbing woman cradles his body. Dreamer, what do you think we should do? She glances at Mishti, amused by your deference. Mum's having the worst day of her life. And the kid's not too crash hot either. Let's hear their stories and try to stop anything worse from happening. The young man sitting off the side of the road is rocking back and forth. A pistol held, unheeded, in one hand. Neither he or his mum appeared to notice you. Lost in their own personal tragedy. Things could get dicey. Hang back while we check this out. You got it, boss. Okay, well, let's talk to... Well, let's... Yeah, let's do this first. He's a solid seven. Would have been an eight, but for the hole in his chest. Seems like he'd be a good listener, though, on account of being... dead. <laughs> All right, let's talk to the mother, then. <laughs> the emaciated woman is sobbing over the body of a man lying sprawled in the dirt. Bright bloodstains... Sorry, bright blood stains his shirt and pools in the dust of the road. She doesn't look up as you approach, trapped in the world of her pain. So these are uh, crossed out, probably because we don't, um, yeah, we're not in those uh, segments of the, the wheel. So what happened? <laughs> at first you think she isn't answering you, then you catch the fragments of words at the edges of her sobs. She looks up, wiping her face with the edges of her sleeves. What are you even doing here? <laughs> she shobs and sobs and shakes her head, pressing a bloody hand to her face. Her wedding ring glints golden through the gore. Again, the Machiavellian ones uh, crossed out. Interesting. Uh, how could we have known you were in trouble? You didn't shoot me already, so you're not entirely heartless, right? She looks at Ella. I've heard about you, the Pale Sisters, Scouts. Why didn't you help us? Ella gives you a look, then steps forward to take command of the situation. What can we do? She stares at Ella a few seconds. For a few seconds, as if to assure herself that the pale woman is real. My son, he's shot Grig. Then he took the gun and... Oh, he's a good boy. I can't lose him too. My son shot Grig, then took the gun. I don't get that. Uh, what's your son's name? It's Will. She stares down at her dead husband. Same as his granddad. Dreamer gives you a brief smile that the pain in her eyes doesn't diminish. Right, we'll go and have a little chat with him then. She nods at the boy sitting in the dirt behind the fence. Let's go. 
Uh, what's going on here? This makeshift cart has seen better days, but still appears to be in one piece. All right, let's chat with Will. Stay back. I've got a gun. He points his pistol loosely in your direction, a mop of dusty brown hair hanging in his eyes. He shakes his head to clear his vision. He can't be more than 18 years old. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go humanist. Hold out your empty hands. I'm not here to hurt you. Just take a deep breath. You don't understand. His arms seem to lower of their own free will. I'll just kill someone. He raises his arms again. They're shaking. I could kill you too. Oh, so what's this? Is that her son? Well, that was her husband. Uh, who was that man? Did he attack you? He scrubs at his face with one hand. No, you got it all wrong. He was... He points the gun at you with renewed ferocity. I don't want to talk about it. Mishti sticks, takes a step towards him, hands up and empty. Hey, let's just have a chat, all right? Uh, well, this is Mishti's specialty, isn't it? Let her take the lead. We've all done things we regret, right? One split-second decision and it seems like it's all over, but it's not. You're still here, and that means you've got a chance to make it right. You don't know what happened, what I did. He gestures wildly with the pistol. Ella's expression doesn't change, but she widens her stance. I killed him, me own dad, and all because he... He... You're not responsible for what your dad did, Will. Her voice is soft, sympathetic. No, it, it wasn't like that. He asked me to. He said he was holding me and Mum back, that we'd never make it to Meriden at this rate, so he asked me to. To make sure she makes it, and I... I shouldn't even be alive. He puts the pistol up under his chin and closes his eyes. Rush him and try to wrench the gun from his hands. Uh oh. As you tackle him, the gun goes off right next to your ear. Over the disorientation and the tinnitus, you find yourself staring into his wide, terrified eyes. He isn't breathing. Yikes. Ella walks over and takes the pistol. You push him aside and stand. Push him aside and stand. What? At uh, the back of his head is a red bloody mess. Dreamer holds, heads over to comfort his mother. We're taking his body to Mum or Nah? She's already picked up his feet. Misty shoves past you and stalks back to the road. I don't think his mum should see him like that. She doesn't move but hangs her head, defeated. She knows the what. All she's waiting for is the why. Your son killed himself, probably. You have my deepest condolences. She stares up at you, then folds over to rest her head on her husband's stomach. No. Ella looks down at the morning woman impassively and then turns away. We're done here. Okay, so that could have played out differently. I wonder if us trying to get the gun off him made it go off. It's kind of the opposite of what I wanted to happen. That was really shit what you did back there. I could have talked him down. I know it. What's it going to take for you to trust me? Ella sighs. Mish, he was waving that gun around like a kid at Christmas. He was going to hurt someone, himself or one of us. This would never have happened if Jake had been here. Had, G had been there. Uh, let's all just calm down. We're plenty calm, thanks. She and Mishti glare at each other for a few seconds more than Ella shrugs. Ask Jake we meet up in Brookton. Until then, you're under me and I say we're going now. Cole looks what up from his tools. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I wonder if we could have resolved that differently. Probably. It takes a little while for the loading to get going, but then when it does, it seems to go up reasonably quick. There we go. Welcome to Kokobi Way Station. Now we've got Cole here, all we need to do is wait for Mick to arrive, then escort the two of them back to Brookton. He should be arriving any minute now. Any minute now? I'm gonna go check the radio tower and catch up with Dustin. He's usually got modulators up the wazoo. I'll be down there if you need me. There he goes. <laughs> Never a dull moment with Cole around. Ella doesn't quite smile, but her face takes on a slightly softer edge. I'll introduce you to Tina. She runs this place. Good person to know if you're looking for work. Oi! Tiny! Alright. 
And I think we'll probably leave it there for now as it's coming up to, what, about 50 minutes or more for this episode. Uh, what I think I will do, though, is uh, is probably play a second episode because I think there's probably a fair bit of demo left to have a look at and hopefully you're interested in seeing it. So I'll just say thanks very much for watching this first episode of the Broken Roads demo on Steam. Uh, if you enjoyed it, as I hope that you did, please do hit the like button on the video. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about this game. Um, I know we've seen a couple of little bugs, but it is it is a demo. It's a very, very early version. In fact, I don't even think... Uh, there's a release date yet for this one. I think it just says coming soon on the store page. Uh, but yeah, let me know what you think about it. Is it something you'd look to play? Let me know. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be great if you could do so. So thanks very much, and I'll hopefully see you next time for more Broken Roads. Bye for now.